Hi, this is Theory Station. I'm John Duggan. This is the Rational Choice Modeling Program. The series we're in is Cost-Benefit Analysis, and this is the second installment in the series. Um, this installment, uh, we're going to be talking about the first order approach. to cost-benefit analysis. And we're just continuing from last time where we kind of gave the basics of the model and some kind of uh, simplifying assumptions that just make the model more usable. Um, and where we ended up with was, uh, where we ended up was we imposed structure on the model that told us um, if we're thinking about this optimization problem of maximizing net benefit with respect to some scale, x, uh, under the conditions we have, we know that there is a solution. It's unique. Uh, we're calling it x star, and we also know that it's positive. Okay, So, um, you know, we're imposing differentiability so just from basic calculus, we know that at this solution, because it's interior, it's not equal to zero, um, we know this first order condition must hold. Okay, this first order condition um, must hold at x star. And that first order condition is that the derivative of the objective function evaluated at x star is equal to zero. Okay, um, That's a necessary condition for any interior maximizer of uh, a problem like this. And um, well, by the sum rule, we can break that Part, so, and I'll just use this Newtonian notation now. That's the same thing as um, as this, right? So the der derivative of benefit at x star minus the derivative of cost at x star is equal to zero. If we add the second term to both sides, we can, um, I'm sorry, we can write that as Equality like so, and um, of course on the left this is marginal benefit. On the right this is marginal cost. Okay, so that is a um, pretty you know fundamental result in um, any kind of cost benefit problem is at a solution uh, the marginal benefit of Increasing scale must equal the marginal cost. They must. They have to offset each other exactly. Okay. Um, in terms of a picture, that's our benefit function, and this is our cost function. As we've said, the net benefit is just the the difference between these two functions, and that's maximized something like here. And if I did this perfectly, um, the derivatives of those functions would be the same. That is, the, the slope of the two graphs would be equal at x star. So you can kind of see the first order condition uh, just in that way. Let me, uh, let me draw another picture of it, though, um, in terms of the marginal benefit and marginal cost functions. Um, okay, so we we're assuming that at zero the marginal benefit is higher than the marginal cost, and we're assuming that it's decreasing because the benefit function is concave. So um, marginal benefit looks something like this. Marginal cost is something like this. It doesn't. It doesn't have to have that kind of convex shape here. There's marginal cost. Um, so you can see where those two curves intersect, right? Well, that's going to be um, at the solution to the first order condition, which is x star, okay? 
Um, now, you can, uh, let me just try to convince you that um, this first order condition is necessary. We, we looked at it in that picture before. In this picture, the way to look at it is, um, so at x star, well, at any x, let's just pick an x. The benefit of x, you know, b of x, is um, you can see that in this graph, though not directly, because I haven't drawn in the graph of the benefit function. The way to see it, though, is as the area under the marginal benefit function. So, um, and this is using um, integration uh, and the fundamental theorem of calculus, if you've seen that, but the upshot is that um, the benefit function at that scale x is just this blue area, okay? The cost evaluated at x is going to be the area under the marginal cost curve. Okay, and so um, we can see the net benefit is just this area here. Okay. Um, all right, so if that's true, then think about choosing x prime instead of x. Well, we've just increased the net benefit by this much. You can keep increasing the scale and increasing the net benefit until you reach x star. And at that point, um, if you chose something bigger than x star, um, you're actually going to be subtracting this area here and, um, and lowering the net benefit. So um, you can, anyway, the upshot is you can actually see the net benefit in terms of areas in looking at these marginal benefit and cost functions. And then it becomes pretty clear that, yeah, at the optimum, um, you have to, you know, use up this whole triangle here on the left. And that means you have to choose a scale, an x star, right where those functions intersect. Okay, so anyway, that's a um, another way of seeing the first order condition. Now, the the advantage of this first order condition is that we have a maximization problem, which you know we can write down and we can think about, but it's really hard just to solve that without any extra help. Um, but what we've done is we have converted that maximization problem into an equation. This right here is, it's an equation with one no, unknown, that's x. We know that, um, we know that the optimal solution, the optimal scale, solves that equation. And in fact, because of the curvature assumptions that we're imposing, it's going to be the unique solution to that equation. So um, let me write that down. The unique solution is the optimal scale x star. So to solve this maximization problem, we just have to solve that equation. and um, that is something that we can, you know, it, there are some equations we can't solve analytically, but there are some that we can just using algebraic techniques. So um, this is really, it's a big help. And um, let's just go through a couple examples to show how this is done. Um, and we're first going to, um, assume that the benefit and cost functions are power functions. So I'm going to have three parameters in this case. Uh, 
And here, um, alpha is just any positive number. Um, beta, I'll want to have between um, 0 and 1. And um, gamma, let's have strictly positive. OK. Um, so those are parameters that can be set arbitrarily subject to these inequality uh, conditions. So um, this is really a, a family of problems that we're looking at. All right, so the problem is then maximizing benefit minus cost. And here I'm just substituting in some substituting in the functional forms. And um, all right, how do we solve that? We take the first order condition, um, marginal benefit is going to be alpha beta x to the beta minus one, marginal cost gamma x to the gamma minus, that doesn't look like a gamma, gamma minus one. Okay, well now we just do a little algebra. Let's, um, uh, let's divide both sides by x to the gamma minus one. Technically, what I'll do is I'll multiply by x to the one minus gamma on both sides. And then I get alpha beta x to the beta minus gamma. And that equals gamma. Um, let's actually beta is less than gamma. That will be, it's nicer to have a positive uh, exponent, I think. So um, we will. Let's move it to the other side. And we get alpha beta divided by gamma is equal to x to the gamma minus beta. And now we're going to take each side to the power gamma minus beta. We have one over gamma minus beta. And we get x star equals alpha beta over gamma to the one over gamma minus beta. OK, so um, I don't know if that part was clear, but basically we take the first order condition, we do some algebra, and, um, and we get an expression for the optimal scale. OK, um, once you have that, you can do um, you know, you can experiment with the parameters to see what the effect on the scale is. Um, but, you know, that's an explicit solution. And, um, you know, once you have that, you can play around with it and, you know, you're good. Let's just try a different functional form, just a slight variation, and we'll go with um, a logarithmic benefit function. And we'll stick with the power function. Um, now I'll, move, I'll put alpha over here, like so. And same conditions, alpha positive. Um, actually, here we'll have beta being anything positive. Gamma will be anything at least as big as 1. Okay. All right, we're going to maximize beta log of x minus alpha x to the gamma. We take the first order condition. The log of x is 1 over x, so this is going to be beta over x. Marginal cost is alpha gamma x to the alpha x to the gamma minus 1. All right, so marginal benefit equals marginal cost is it's just this equality here. Um, we multiply both sides by x, divide by alpha gamma, and we get this expression. And in the end, we get um, our solution, which is the optimal scale, is equal to this expression. Okay. 
little bit different from before. Again, though, this first order approach is very powerful. It gives us a way of solving problems that otherwise we just wouldn't be able to do anything with. You know, maybe we could graph them, maybe we could guess where the optimal scale is, but here we have it as an explicit function of parameters. Okay, that's a couple of examples. Let me um, do something that's still an example, but more of a, uh, a more important example. So this is going to be um, the example of a competitive firm. Okay, um, if you've had any microeconomics, um, there the simplest model of a firm in the world is more complicated, but in basic micro, um, a firm just maximizes profits. Okay, and we're going to talk about a competitive firm which is one that just takes the price prices as given in you know output markets and factor markets. Um, so right, so we have a firm. It um, I'm go I'm going to expand on this, but initially, uh, let me introduce a little bit different notation here. So we're going to suppose this firm. Um, produces some quantity of output, and we'll call that y. And that would be some non-negative real valued variable. And, um, and the price of that output is, sorry, the price of that output is p. And uh, we'll assume that that's positive. So if the firm produces y units of this good, it can sell them for p dollars per unit. Okay. Again, it just takes the p as given. Um, so it doesn't worry about, well, if I produce these units of output, can I sell them? Can I find buyers? You can just automatically sell anything, uh, any output for p dollars per unit. So um, all right. It costs, um, it's costly to um, produce output. And let's let the, uh, the cost of producing y units of output uh, be this y to the power one over alpha, where alpha is bigger than one. Okay. Um, so, Sorry, I mean alpha is less than 1. And that means that 1 over alpha is greater than 1. All right. So if the firm produces y units of output, then um, the firm's revenue is uh, just p times y. OK? Um, of course, the cost, as we just said, is uh, y to the 1 over alpha. Um, okay, so then profits, the firm's profit would be revenue minus cost. So it's p times y minus y to the 1 over alpha. And um, we're going to think about a profit maximizing firm. So the firm chooses y to solve its profit maximization problem. Okay. And um, again, we just, uh, okay, so before I just solve this, let me just point out, even though I'm talking about a firm, this is basically a cost benefit problem. Okay. In this case, we have the benefit function Here, I should say, the scale that we're talking about is just this amount of output, the y, OK? Um, revenues, then, would be the benefit of uh, production, of producing y units. Um, and obviously, that's going to be a linear function here, because it's just p times y. And here, y to the 1 over alpha, that's the cost 
of output. And, and so if we think about the problem this way, it's just a cost benefit problem. Okay. Um, solving this, let's go up here. The first order condition is, um, well, the marginal benefit is just a constant, it's P, since we have a linear benefit function. And um, marginal cost would be this expression over here. The first order condition is that those two things are equal. Um, this exponent, we can simplify a little bit. Um, 1 over alpha minus 1 is just going to be 1 minus alpha over alpha. Okay. All right, so solving this, we multiply both sides by alpha. Uh, by alpha. We get alpha p is equal to y minus alpha over alpha. Now we're going to raise both sides to the power alpha over 1 minus alpha. And we get the optimal amount of production. The optimal units of output is going to be alpha p raised to the alpha over 1 minus alpha power. Okay. So, um, you know, this depends on, um, you know, there's two parameters here. There's the price, and obviously, or you can just see, if the price goes up, then the optimal output goes up. It makes a lot of sense, right? If, um, if the firm's product becomes more valuable, it's going to produce more of it. So um, why, am I, why am I using this 1 over alpha as the exponent here? Um, I wanted to make the point that this is taking one cut of the firm's problem, but um, there's another way of thinking about it. Um, there's this question of, you know, in this model, um, we're just supposing if the firm wants to produce Y units of output, it can do it, but we don't really say how that happens, okay? In a more complete model of the firm, um, we would actually model the, uh, you know, the production process and the way we would do that, um, so just going into more detail about the firm's problem, um, we can actually think about um, there being, well, how is the firm producing this output? Well, it's got to use something to make it, and that's going to involve labor. It's going to involve raw materials, capital equipment. Um, for what we're doing right now, I just want to think about, let's suppose there's one um, factor of production, so like labor. So to produce a, um, an amount of output, you have to use some input, like labor, and, and um, we'll use x to denote the amount of input into this production process. Okay, so if you choose X units of input or labor or whatever it is, um, that's going to create output. And um, again, in, in these simple models of the firm, we just assume that there is a production function. I'll use F for that. So basically, you you put in some input, and the function just gives you an amount of output, okay? And um, we're going to assume, um, by the way, before I do that, let me also just say, if you're using input, this, some input, there's a price to, for that, okay? And um, we'll use W for that. So this is going to be the, um, the factor price, if you want to call it that. Um, if we're talking about labor, then that would be the wages that you have to pay. Okay, so if we're measuring labor 
in terms of hours of labor, so X is hours of labor, um, then W would be the price per hour of that labor, so it would be the hourly wage rate. All right. So let's assume for simplicity here that um, our production function has a um, has a power function form where alpha is our parameter and um, and alpha is uh, between zero and one. So that's going to, that means that this function has a concave shape like this. Okay. Um, here the horizontal axis is the amount of input and the vertical axis is the amount of output or y. Okay. Um, okay. Just a little bit of uh, terminology here. Um, if, if I pick one level of input here and I look at the slope of that production function um, at x, that is going to give me, um, it's going to tell me, you know, how sensitive uh, the output is to a little bit more labor at that, uh, at that level of labor. So um, that slope is called the marginal product um, in this case of labor, but in general, just be whatever input you're, you're talking about. Okay. Um, because this production function is concave, that marginal product is, is decreasing, uh, as you choose higher levels of input. All right. So, um, so now we've just kind of opened up the production process a little bit here. Um, uh, so now this is where, output comes from. Um, all right, so suppose, let's suppose the firm um, wants to produce uh, Y units of output. Then, um, how much of the uh, input is needed. Okay, well, to, to figure that out, we set this up as an equation. We want, um, we want to choose X units of input to get Y units of output. So that means X to the alpha, which is the amount that you're producing using X should equal Y. And, um, and then we just solve that. So, um, so to produce uh, Y units, um, the firm needs It needs y raised to the one over alpha uh, units of the input. Okay, so so given this um, production process, then the cost of producing y units. Um, of, of output, well, that's going to be what? Um, well, you need um, y to the one over alpha units of the input. And um, each input here costs, each unit of input costs w. And so um, the cost function would have this form 
w times y to the 1 over alpha. Okay, so, um, and that's similar to what we have here in our model. Um, if I had put a, a w in here, it would be the same thing. We could add a parameter. By the way, I should also say this alpha should have been positive. And let's, let's put in a w. So the cost is w times that. And this will be a w here. Okay, a little revisionism, revisionism there, but um, so uh, so now you can see that our um, our model of production actually gives us this cost benefit problem that we started with. Um, now I've I've added this extra parameter. Um, unsurprisingly, by the way, if W goes up, so if the input becomes more expensive, um, your optimal um, level of output is going to go down. Okay, so that's just opening up the firm a little bit more, and um, I think you know that's probably enough about the first order approach. Um, this gives you an idea of, of how you can use these tools to address a big class of problems um, that's relevant for a lot of different situations. So I think that's enough for this installment. Um, next time I'm going to, uh, I might talk a little bit more about the first order approach, but I, I, I'm mostly done with that. Uh, the main thing next time will be to add fixed costs and, um, and to give this decision maker an outside option. So rather than force them to um, choose an optimal level of scale, they can um, say, no, I'm not even gonna, uh, I'm not even gonna try to solve that problem, okay? Um, so we'll do that um, and we'll talk about, I don't know if we'll get to it next time, but we'll talk about a multi-dimensional model of cost benefit analysis and we'll, come back to the firm. So that's what's coming up and I'll see you in the next one.